when I talk about speed, I don't mean that. I don't mean the don't go slower than 50 mile an hour kind of speed. I'm talking about a moderate speed which will help us balance. This is the kind of moderate speed I'm talking about. So I always go back to the bicycle analogy. So if you're on a bike, standing still, you lift your feet up, you're gonna fall one side or the other. Ow! But if you're rolling, you've got that little bit of speed. It's the reason that parents give the kids a bit of a shove ah! when they're learning to cycle. It's just that little bit of speed that really, really helps. Now, obviously this applies on two feet, but on one foot, you definitely need that little bit of speed just to help you. So where does this magical speed come from? Most of the time when you're skating, it's gonna come from the two inside wheels. This is the case forwards when you do a T-push and it's also the case backwards when you do a backwards T-push like this. Very often when we're learning a new move, I'll be like, oh, hold on. And that is because obviously we're learning the balance of a new move, but it's also because I want to hold on because it is a little bit harder to balance when you're stationary. Now you're gonna to say to me, but what about when we dance in place? There's a very good mechanics with this one because you still have a push and a pull when we dance in place. And that is our speed that helps with the balance. For example, if we're gonna do the downtown, we don't just do this. There is a push and a pull. So I will pull from the instep here. Then when I step into my V, I'm pushing there and again there. So there is, there's a speed to it and that's what helps me stay upright. This works with lots of these sorts of moves. So if I'm gonna learn the grapevine, I'm gonna learn the turns and the mechanics at the chair. But when I actually try and do it rolling, I need that little bit of speed to make it flow. And without that, it's gonna be much, much harder because I'm just gonna be very slow and static and it's a lot harder to balance. We've launched a skatey Patreon page and YouTube memberships. What's the difference? Well, both are essentially the same, where you can gain access to some more me bonus content. More of me! <laughs> oh, you lucky thing. There are three main tiers, but YouTube has an extra option where you can unlock custom badges and emojis for when you comment on one of my videos. Tier one will give you advanced access to our next video one week before it goes live to the public. Tier two will give you the same early access to our next video, but you also get some outtakes videos where things didn't quite go to plan. Now, I know we used to put outtakes at the end of all of our videos, but this upset the mighty YouTube algorithm overlord. So we had to remove them because it was affecting our attention. However, people actually said, where have they gone? So this is why we've brought them back. Finally, tier three is everything included in the other levels, as well as exclusive behind the scenes footage and blog posts from me. It'll be things like me talking you through my roller skate setups, taking you behind the scenes for a peek at how we create the Skatey channel. If you like the lessons that we create each week and want to help support the channel whilst gaining access to these extra perks, then please check out the links in the description. Whichever you prefer, it's the same pricing on both platforms and we'd love to see you there. Now back to the lesson. So every move we do when we roller skate, you should be able to find somewhere that you can put a push in. Even if you're on two feet, so say for example, you're just learning bubbles. It's great to do this, bit of speed, and you're pushing. Now I'm pushing on my inside edges here, and that is really important. There's always a push, even if you're on two feet. So say I'm doing a stagger, just swapping staggers, I can push on that inside edge and give myself a push and a bit more speed. So it's a matter of just thinking about the mechanics and working out where you can get this into the move. We're talking about speed being our friend. However, when it comes to transitions, it's good because the speed of the momentum will help turn you. But there's a really, really important part we have to bear in mind is that your feet always have to be with the direction of travel. So if you are learning to do a transition, a nice, easy, gentle one, open book, and I'm sort of really slow here, and then I turn, and I'm like, oh, I've turned, and now I'm going backwards. You see how I haven't actually gone a full 180 turn, I've come over here, which when I'm slow, doesn't matter at all. But if I was to do that when I was fast, I would turn and end up with my wheels against the direction of travel, and my upper body keeps going. <laughs> 
and bad things happen. This is really, really important when it comes to transitions. When you have that bit of speed, that you're confident enough that you're gonna do a full 180 and be in the direction of travel. The same thing applies when you're outside. So I get it, outside can be scary. But the tendency then is to use caution and then you start going slower. But if you hit a stone or debris when you're going slowly, your wheels are more likely to stop and you're gonna oh. So it's actually safer to use this little bit of moderate speed that we've been talking about and then you should roll over the debris. However, there are some surfaces outside that just cannot be skated on, like this, for example. But I have lots of videos that cover this and how to deal with the many hazards that you will find outside. So I shall link those for you. So next time you're having trouble with your balance, think, am I using a moderate speed? I'm Katie, you've been watching Skatie, and I'll see you next time. Bye.